And I'd like to uh, thank everyone for their participation in this Wednesday night Bible study. I hope it uh, proves profitable to you. And uh, of course, we just had a uh, presentation on whether or not we can know things. And we have to use logic in order to know those things. And last week, uh, I, uh, in the study of logic, I stopped off at uh, oh, methods of definition and rules and, and went over a little overtime to get through those. So now we're going to start with statements. But before we do, uh, let's have a short word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we pray that we may always use logic as is presented in thy holy word to understand thy will for us. And having discerned what thou would have us to know in order to attain salvation, may we be fully obedient to those things that we have learned, neither walking to the right or to the, to the left but down the, the straight and narrow path of truthfulness. Bless us now as we engage in the study and in all things that are in accordance with our will. Thank thee for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray, amen. I'm going to share the screen. And I'll minimize these things we don't need to look at. We're going to talk now about uh, statements. And it's important because a lot of the uh, Bible, uh, even though they're commands and questions and whatever, there are a lot of statements and we should pay attention to them. And a lot of things that people say to you are statements and you should pay attention to them. But it does a little, very little good to pay attention to them if you don't, don't know what a statement is. So we uh, read here uh, just a general overview of statements. A statement is a particular kind of sentence. And it uh, brings a um, message that can either be said to be uh, true or false. Sometimes we just call it the truth value. For example, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Galatians. That brings a message. It is saying something that Paul did. Uh, well, the next statement, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Isaiah. Now, in evaluating statements, we uh, look for their truth value. Uh, the, the above the first statement above has a truth value of true, and we know that. We just we don't have to go into proving it. We know it to be true. And the second statement has a truth value of, of false because we know that the uh, book of Isaiah, uh, in the hand that wrote it was Isaiah. So if a sentence has no truth value, then it is not a statement. What well, doesn't the first, the second uh, sentence have the appearance of a statement, well, it does, but it's a statement of a lie. The following are not statements, and you'll see uh, readily why. Who wrote the book of Timothy? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. They're not statements because the first sentence is a question. It is neither true nor false. It has no truth value. So it's not a statement. The second sentence is a command. Now we we could uh, I guess make an argument about uh, whether it's it's necessary to be obedient to this command, but it's still a command. It doesn't have a truth value, and therefore it's not a statement. There's another kind of statement, uh, sentence that appears in the form to be a statement, but is not. The Ram Square uh, sweetly picked. I kicked the green yesterday. Well, that cannot be said to be true or false. Uh, you can't make any sense out of it. It's a, it's a nonsensical statement at best. Just, just pure nonsense. 
but that's not the only uh, form of nonsensical a sentence can take. Uh, to wit, you know, we we can say this statement is false. Does it have a truth value? Well, if it's true, then it's false. But if it's false, then it's true. Again, it it uh, has no truth value. It can't be said to be uh, true or false since either uh, position presents a unsolvable conundrum. It is also nonsense. So the, in general, that's a uh, statement. Let's go to another kind of statement. Uh, Self-supporting statements. So once we have determined uh, that a sentence uh, is a uh, statement, we can further distinguish between self-supporting statements and supported statements. And then this distinction depends on how the truth value of the uh, statement is determined. Self-supporting statement, you, know, you can just imagine that's within itself. They have a, an immediately apparent truth value you don't have to go outside of the statement to determine its truth value. Self-supporting statements can uh, be divided into three categories. Self-reports. A self-report is a statement that expresses one's own desires, beliefs, or feelings. For example, I believe that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Well, the truth value that makes this a statement is, is not the uh, veracity of, of the information provided, but rather the person making the statement believes it to be so. Uh, then we, we say, yes, it is true. The person does believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So it has a, a truth value of uh, true. And that's why it's important to analyze statements for what it's actually saying. <clears throat> Now, another self-supporting uh, statement is statements that are true or false by <clears throat> logical structure. This is a statement that can be seen to be true or false by how the sentence is put together. Uh, as an example, Jesus is the son of, son of God, typo there, or he is not the son of God. This statement is uh, necessarily true and cannot be false since it covers all possibilities. He either is or isn't. A statement that is true by logical structure is called a tautology. Other statements are uh, necessarily false. For example, Jesus is the Son of God and he is not the Son of God. Well, both can't be true. And uh, I guess it could be both or it could be false, but both certainly cannot be true. So, it's, so that statement is, is a false statement. This is an example of a self-contradiction. It's, uh, it's false by logical structure. Another form of a self-supporting statement, the statements that are true are false by definition. Some statements are true or false because of the definition of the words in the sentence. For example, all triangles are three-sided figures. And this is true by definition. We know what a triangle is. Tri means three and angle is the, and all triangles have three angles. So they have three sides. But the following is, a, is false by definition. The triangle is an octagon. Well, we know what a triangle is and we know what an octagon is. Triangles, uh, three-sided or three angles and an octagon is eight-sided or eight angles. So according to the definition of a triangle in octagon, this statement is false.
So let's go to another type of statement. Okay, we covered the supported statement, self reports or self supporting and supported statements. So the other kind of a general statement is a supported statement. It does not stand or fall by itself. It must have evidence from outside investigation or it can be declared to be true or false. It must be supported by something else. Uh, Solomon had a treaty with Hiram. It's raining outside. The leaning tire of pizza, pizza will fall down. These are statements. They're not questions or commands. So they can either be true or, or false. <clears throat> Determine the truth value of these statements. It's uh, necessary to go outside of the statement and gather some inf information to establish its uh, veracity. <clears throat> One source of this information is authority. So how do we know that uh, Solomon had a treaty with Hiram? Can't go back in time. So we must uh, reference some trustworthy authoritative, authoritative source, such as the Bible, to determine the existence of a treaty between Solomon and Hiram. Indeed, there was a treaty, so it's a true statement. A second source of uh, his uh, information is experience. <clears throat> is it raining outside? I go outside and see. Of course, I can just look at my security cameras and see whether it is or isn't. So when we determine the truth value of a statement by experience, we are appealing to our senses of sight, touch, taste, smell, and hearing. A third way to determine the truth value of a supported statement is by deduction, and we will, of course, deal with that quite a bit. That's in which we reason to some conclusion based on other statements. How do we know that the leaning tire of Pisa will fall down? Well, we could reason thusly. All man-made structures will eventually fall down without a, uh, some outside intervention. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, Pisa is a man-made structure. Therefore, the Leaning Tower of Pisa will eventually uh, fall down. So all different types of uh, statements are represented in the following uh, chart, uh, which is this. So you have the statements in general. We have to determine the statements. Of self-supporting statements, you can have self-reports. Uh, it's just obvious it's a true statement. Or by the logical structure, there's no conflict in the uh, statement. Or by definition, logical uh, structure can be uh, either a tautology, it's, it's uh, is not that contradict itself, or it's a self contradiction. In a supported statement, uh, that's one that you must go outside of the statement and gather information to determine whether or not it's true or false. You can do that by uh, some authority, authoritative, reliable, and authoritative uh, source, or by a experience your five senses. And of course, uh, suppose. In you can be fooled there, but nevertheless, that is a way of uh, ascertaining the veracity of a supported statement by experience. Or by deduction, uh, this is so, uh, therefore, this is so, then the conclusion is that this is so. So those are the uh, four or the two broad categories of statements. <clears throat> well, what's the relationship between 
statements. Uh, let's look at, not that one, but the relationships between statements. Well, self-supporting statements and supporting statements can be related to other statements in different ways. There are four major relationships that are that concerned us. Well, first uh, relationship is consistent consistency. When two statements can be true at the same time, they are said to be consistent. Uh, for example, these two statements are consistent with each other. Paul was an apostle. The apostle Paul was never in Germany. Well, these statements are consistent. You may think they're dealing with different things, but they're consistent because there's no conflict between them. And both can be true at the same time, and they are. If there is a conflict between the statements, then they are inconsistent. As an example, the Apostle Paul was never in Germany. The Apostle Paul spent his entire life in Germany. It is not possible for both of these statements to be true. The statements are therefore inconsistent. There's another way uh, that can establish a relationship between statements. Uh, two statements are related by implication. When the truth of the first requires or necessitates the truth of the second. And I know that a lot of people don't like uh, these uh, letters for abbreviations of things, but it's it's convenient to do that without having to retype all this stuff. <clears throat> if statement P, whatever it is, implies statement Q, whatever that is, and if statement P is true, then statement Q must be true. And let's uh, give an example of this, putting in place P and Q. P, all Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. Q, some Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. And remember what we said about when we talked about a, a subset of a, an all-inclusive um, number? It's just as true as it. We're not saying anything about the thing that's not included in the sum. We're just saying the sum is part of the all. So the some Christians are Paul, part of the all Christians. So some Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. So he who says P must also say Q. This is because P, a P implies Q. It would not be possible to maintain that all Christians were followers of Christ, while some were not. Like I said, in logic, uh, when it, when it said that 100% has some attribute, followers of Christ, and then say out of that 100%, 40% have that same attribute, followers of Christ, we are saying nothing to change the attribute of the remaining 60%. We're just saying the 40% are part of the 100, and they are also followers of Christ. So note that if two statements are related by implication, then they are necessarily consistent. Third relationship is a logical equivalence. If uh, two statements are logically equivalent, the first must imply the second, and the second must imply the first. If the two statements are logically equivalent, then they must be true or they must both be false. It is not possible for one to be true and the other false, or the first to be true and the other one, uh, the first one be false and the other one be true. It just can't, it can't be. For example, P, no Christians are Buddhists. That's what P is. And Q, this is what Q is. 
nor no Buddhist or Christians. P implies Q. If P is Q, if no Christians are Buddhist, then Q is true. There are no Buddhists that are Christians. If Q is true, no Buddhists are Christians, then P is true. In this case, both are true. If the word American were substituted for the word Buddhist, then both statements would be false. One implies the other. Since one is false, both must be false. And we can do that. No Christians are Americans, whether some Christians are Americans, and no Americans are Christians. Well, they're both false. So one implies the other, both have to be false. The following statement uh, statements are also logically equivalent. P, some mammals are egg layers, platypus, for example. And some egg layers are mammals. Uh, the fourth relationship between statements is if the truth or falsity of one statement has nothing to do with the truth or falsity of another statement, then they are independent. There are two indications that help determine if statements are independent. First, neither statement can imply the other. And second, the statements must be consistent. <clears throat> And neither statement can necessitate the truth of the other statement implication. And neither statement can necessitate, uh, necessitate the falsity of the other statement, inconsistency. Two independent statements are given a, as examples. All Christians have had their sins forgiven. All tricycles have three wheels. If one statement implies the other, then they are not independent. If one statement contradicts the other, then they are not independent. In this case, neither statement implies the other, and neither statement contradicts the other. The truth value of one has, not, uh, has no impact on the truth value of the other. Therefore, they are independent of each other. All these uh, relationships are indicated on the following chart. Statements can be either consistent or inconsistent. In other consistent statements, they can either be independent of one another or, or they can apply. They can either be equivalent or non-equivalent. Let's talk about uh, consistency and disagreement. The consistency of statements, uh, sometimes hard to determine if they're consistent. Uh, two, two statements may appear to be inconsistent, but on closer examination turn out to be consistent. When there appears to be a, an inconsistency, it is called, but there's really not, it's called a disagreement. There are three kinds of disagreements considered here. Uh, real disagreements. This is not only a, appears to be an inconsistency, but it is an actual inconsistency. Both statements cannot be true at the same time. For example, Jesus is the Son of God, and then Jesus is not the Son of God. If you had a person to affirm first and deny the second, and, and another person affirm the second and deny the uh, first, then there's a real disagreement. Then they can debate uh, a, a real disagreement, not just a, a matter of words. Second uh, type of disagreement is an apparent disagreement. 
Now, apparent disagreements are frequently the result of differences of opinion or perception. For example, Smith, I think a lot of times it begins with I think or I feel. I think logic is easy. And Joan says, I think logic is the hardest course I have ever taken. Well, there's no true disagreement here. <clears throat> uh, both statements are self-reports. And both can be taken as true without contradiction. They just, they're just they just saying uh, what they feel. There's a difference of opinion, but there's no more than that. There's no logical contradiction. <clears throat> and there can be a, another difference a, is a verbal uh, dis, uh, disagreement. When different definitions are used for the same words, that is when words are vague or ambiguous, um, verbal disagreements can occur. This does not mean or necessarily that there's a true inconsistency. For example, uh, Murphy says one fifth of all high school graduates are illiterate. Johnson says one third of all high school graduates are illiterate. They seem, they seem to disagree, uh, be a, a real disagreement. But the difference between Murphy and Johnson, uh, though it looks like an inconsistency, you have, you have to delve a little deeper into it. Depends on the word illiterate. Suppose Murphy intends a word to mean those who cannot read at all. And Johnson means those who cannot read past a second grade or pick whatever level you want. They could end up in a in an extended uh, period of heated discussion before realizing they don't really disagree at all. And Johnson may, in, in fact, agree with Murphy and Murphy with, with Johnson. Because of the possibility of uh, verbal disagreements, it is essential to define, define terms in the first part of the debate. So let's look at uh, in studying statements and categorical logic. There's one verb that we need to pay special attention to. That's the verb of, of being, and that is, is, are, was, were, will be, and, and so on. This helps in the analysis of statements. Instead of saying, no cows eat meat, the verb would be changed to say, no cows are meat eaters. Another example, John will run swiftly, and you change it up to be, John will be a swift runner. As statements are placed into arguments, it, it's helpful to avoid the verbs of normal, ordinary conversation. This simplifies, it simplifies the analysis of statements, but uh, it doesn't mean that there are no pitfalls. You want everybody to use the same verb. Even the word is can carry different definitions. And just think about the following. God, A, is love, B. Love, B, is blind, C. Ray Charles, D, is blind C, therefore Ray Charles D is God A. Well, you can see there's a obviously a problem here. Uh, the argument's fallacious because it treats uh, each of the word the words is as though it were an equal sign. A equals B, B equals C, C equals D, and therefore D equals A. But it does not always have that meaning because the different uses of love and blind are not equivalent. Here's another ordinary statement. My little brother throws rocks. Uh, to change statements like this into 
standard form, use the uh, uh, following procedure. Identify and write down the entire subject. In the previous example, the entire subject is my little brother. Then choose the proper to be verb. Consider the number, singular or plural, of the subject in the tense, past, present, future of the verb. My little brother, of course, the uh, verb is the uh, brother's the noun, is singular. And the verb throws is present tense. So the proper verb to be verb is is. <clears throat> Well, third, rewrite the entire predicate as a predicate nominative, that is, a noun. In, the, in this case, the predicate throws rocks becomes rock thrower. The whole proposition becomes my little brother is a rock thrower. The following example is uh, slightly more awkward, but uh, sometimes it gets to be a problem. The Apostle Paul rebuked Peter at Antioch. The Apostle Paul was a Peter at Antioch rebuker. You observe that the original statement is in the past tense, so the reformatted statement here is also in the past tense. So, you know, things can get a little sticky there, but in that, for that reason, just for common usage, you may not, uh, may do something differently. Now they're categorical statements. And what are the standard uh, categorical statements? Again, we use letters in, in place of the statements themselves. Categorical statements are statements that affirm or deny something about a given subject uh, category. Every category statement can be assigned to one of four forms. The forms are as follows, all, S, or P, no S or P, and we're going to get more into this when we get into squares of opposition. Third form is some S or P, and some S or not P. If you think about the square of opposition, you got four corners, one, two, three, and four are going to be at the four corners. So how can a statement be assigned to one of these forms? The following sentence will demonstrate how. Nobody shuts the door. First, the ger, uh, verb is changed as previously demonstrated. The sentence thus becomes, nobody is a door shutter. Then the sentence can be put into one of the previous four forms. Uh, no person is a door shutter. You can say all persons are uh, door shutter. No person is door shutter. Some persons are door shutters and and uh, some persons are not door shutters. Statements have two parts, a subject and a predicate. The subject is usually symbolized by the letter S, subject, and the predicate uh, by the letter P, or predicate. In a categorical statement, a relationship is expressed between two classes of objects, the subject class and the predicate class. That is, for example, people on the one hand and door shutters on the other. Each uh, statement has a quantity uh, and a quality. <clears throat> the quantity identifies whether the statement is universal, all or no. And in the uh, uh, square of opposition, the universal statement is going to be at the top. <clears throat> or a particular, some or some not, and that's going to be at the bottom of the square. A statement is universal when it makes a claim about the entire extension, remember the extension and uh, then, you know, where you, uh, your extension and intention, where you expand it out or in. This extension, which you expand it out as far as you can, that 
makes it universal. The statement is particular when it makes a claim about part of the extension of the subject, or as we have said before, the intention. The quality identifies whether the statement is affirmative, all or some, or negative, no or some not. And if you look at the square opposition, the affirmative is going to be on, as you're looking at it, you could say the driver's side, but you couldn't, that wouldn't work in England. As you're looking at it, it's going to be on the left side, and the negative is going to be on the, the right side. A statement is affirmative when it affirms something of the subject. It is negative when it denies something of the subject. There are four combinations of quantity and quality which gives the four standard categorical statements. And again, you can you can put these uh, this information on the square proposition to make it particular make it uh, understandable what the square is trying to do. In the upper left hand corner, you would put all S or P, and that's a universal statement, and it's affirmative. And in the right upper hand corner, you would put no S or P. That's also a universal statement, but it's negative. Now, at the bottom of the square in the bottom left hand corner, you would say some S or P. That is particular because you're singling out uh, just a part of the universe, a particular part, but it's affirmative. And then you could say in the lower right hand corner, you could say some S or not P. That is also particular because you're talking about just a part of it. And that's negative. So you the statements you can put in the four corners. Uh, universal, you could put at the top, at the top longitudinal, longitudinal line. In particular, down at the bottom of the longitudinal line. And uh, the affirmative, you can put that on the left hand uh, attitudinal or upright line, and uh, some are not, or, or some are, you can put that on the other side, uh, the negative on the other side. <clears throat> so, again, we'll get into this when we look at. Uh, uh, the square of the opposition. So let's, let's finish this up before we leave. In developing a formal argument, the statements must be put into one of these standard forms. So the rules for translating categorical statements into, into standard categorical form as follows. The statements must begin with, with the words all, no, or some. The verb must be the verb of being, is, are, was, were, will, be, and so forth. Both the subject and the predicate must be a noun or a noun phrase. So we've covered the first two rules uh, as illustrative of the third rule in standard categorical form. We do not say all dogs are brown. Instead, the proper form would be all dogs are brown animals. This is because brown is in the above statements is an adjective. Whereas brown animals give the use the expression the noun it needs. Another example would be some houses are big, but uh, properly it should be some houses are big structures. So we'll we'll stop here tonight and we'll continue this. Uh, where we really get into the square of opposition next week. And if you remember this particular one, and if uh, people if you want uh, me to email this to you just let me all know or I'll just uh, automatically send it out because you need to know this information to understand the square of opposition. Thank you and good night.